So income-based repayment started in 2009, and what the original income-based repayment was was 15% of your discretionary income. And if you're low income for the whole time, if you never end up making more than $30,000 and you have $80,000 in loans, we will forgive the loans you haven't been able to pay off the remaining balance after 25 years. So what the Obama administration said was, we want to make this even better for borrowers. 15% is too much. So they said, instead of 15% of your discretionary income, we're going to make it 10% of your discretionary income. And instead of 25 years of loan forgiveness, we're going to make it 20. And in doing so, they said, this is going to help middle income borrowers. Right? So we wanted to see how these changes affected real borrowers. So we built a calculator that's available online for anyone to use, and we started running scenarios. And what we found is, is that the change from 15 to 10%, which is a 33% reduction in monthly payments, doesn't really help low-income borrowers that much because it only affects their monthly payment by a few dollars. But it does have a huge effect on high-debt, high-income borrowers. So someone who went to law school and took out $150,000 in loans, they could start out with a starting salary of, say, $60,000, and they need income-based repayment. They can't possibly pay off the standard monthly payment on their loan, which is fine. But what we found is because the, the terms of the new, new income-based repayment are so generous, that even when these uh, borrowers end up making two hundred dollars or $250,000 down the road, they still get forgiveness and they get a lot of forgiveness. Something like $100,000 or $150,000 in some cases. So in finding that, we said, this isn't right. You know, we should be helping low-income borrowers, not high-income borrowers.